Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video on my channel. Inside of today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the EMEA Monthly Finals, Grand Finals, Zeta Division versus Humble. So last year, World Final Team, well, who literally won the World Finals versus Humble, who are pretty much, I think, they're second in EMEA right now, or maybe even num uh, number one. I completely forgot, uh, but this is a banger of a game. So quickly, we'll go through the draft, and I am not too sure on the result of this because essentially... There was a bunch of issues during the broadcast. You guys probably know that if you watched it. There was just so much lag during Spectator. And they ended up pausing it for like 20 minutes or something. So I'm having to watch this afterwards. I was ready to record this live. But it just took the sting out of things. So I'm just, I'm ready to watch it now. So I know what happens in the first set. But not the other two sets. So we're we'll taking a look at the draft real quickly here. Before we skip through the first game. So Byron first pick from Humble. Uh, it's decent. But at the same time I don't really like it too much. So then we have Amber and Pearl. Pearl being a very, very underrated brawler. Otis is an insanely underrated brawler on last stop, by the way. Really good for locking down the lane with the vision gear. You've also got the gadget that covers the entirety of the grass. It's just a really solid pick, especially against tanks. And then, uh, of course, as I said, Pearl can be pretty good. Good as a mid, good as a lane. You can use it to break open lanes as well. And Carl, a little bit of an interesting pick, especially against Pearl, because Pearl can at least knock back the Carl with super. And then you've also got Amber, who's not even the worst against Carl anymore since the uh, gadget got buffed with the damage. And then last pick for Zeta. Uh, again, I already noticed they're going to be going the Fang, which Fang is pretty good into their composition. It's good against the Carl, especially with a stun gadget. It's really good into Byron because you just need one super hit and then one shot and then the, the jump carry is dead instantly so they're gonna go to fang we're actually gonna skip through the first game because the first game was pretty much unwatchable during the spectator phase so yeah we'll just have to skip through it unfortunately again it i can't even watch it in game i tried to watch the game from us uh friends list and i can't even watch it, it was that laggy so i think it's the brawl style service they're just bugging out right now because i'm pretty sure pretty sure brawl stars in its most popular state like brawl talk i think that's the most used by far ever recently that came out which was actually on the same time same time during this uh game so uh you can see here so the strategy clearly is from zeta we're going to try and put the fang on the call it's going to be three supers for fang the entire time pearl against the byron but i mean pearl doesn't have the best matchup against byron but at the same time if the pearl is allowed to fully heat up and then gadgets once pretty much byron's dead every single time but the problem is byron's got really easy to hit main attack and pearl has a bigger hitbox so it's just easier to hit a pearl and lucky does miss his super there though now he's going to go for the super and for the stun and you can see that combination of course he shoots once before his super lands the super so that's two hits to super then he's, he shoots once gadgets and shoots again and then he's got another super that's if you know that fang tech then it's gonna be really easy and then now he's straight away onto byron gets the kill and that's just why you go a brawl like fang into byron and that's why i wouldn't personally have gone byron is because he's easy to counter as a mid you can't really have those mids unless you draft it a little bit later on but uh suspect to any aggro any sort of aggression so i mean i was gonna go down here humble do have a chance to turn things around they've got a byron splash as well great kill onto fang but i've kind of needed at least one of those gems to um let's reset the countdown that's a really good super from now right there smantic hits a good mute onto him but it doesn't even matter i mean that was a really clever play from now by the way the fact that he just drops his gems like you might think oh well he drops his gems wow he died how can that be clever well he's just giving his teammates the gems so then he can go in on respawn especially as an uh, aggro brawler he can take all the attention off i mean he literally just did it perfectly and they just won like that so that's gonna be set number one a little bit chalked in terms of the spectator side of things but let's open set number two all right guys jumping into set number two we've got new horizons knockout so at least this is a map you guys should be familiar with it's been in the rank rotation for a little while now we see the kit ban straight away so the pros don't want to deal with that kit cheese anymore everyone knows how strong kit is seriously i'm excited to hopefully see a little bit of draco within these games so rt first pick so even with kit banned we've seen rt played on very early in the draft i think a good reason for it is because if you literally look at those walls if you can have like a like a tank like a buster or 
or just anything like that behind those walls it can be pretty scary so that is why uh they've gone on rt uh larry and laurie as well we've seen them played a lot in the knockout meta right now reason being it's because they're still decent against other throwers just because um example just because of the way their main attack works the second projectile is just so good for zoning it's so good for keeping pressure on a lane and it just stops the opponents from push being able to push into especially if you manage your ammo well that's why larry and laurie are really toxic you just think of like tick for example that's why tick is really good as a throw because he's really good at zoning stopping people from moving into a certain position same applies to larry and laurie of course they're a lot less vulnerable to assassins and stuff like that so that's why they're a good uh, throw in the meta sprout so sprout is pretty decent into larry and laurie a good sprout will win that interaction but it's definitely not unwinnable for larry and laurie and the problem is with sprout as well he will get countered and specifically if uh zeta go any type of aggro pick but i guess rt kind of somewhat stops zeta from going something aggressive and then a buster from um humble like literally what i expected buster's always been shown on here so if i was zeta just trying to think i mean uh gene is banned i mean i've seen piper into this before i've seen like brock into this something to break open the map because pearl already breaks open the map uh before barley okay they go with a double thrower so wait let me okay yeah okay that's a good pick that is a very good pick the reason why that's a good pick is because humble have no wall break and they don't really have proper aggression like buster he can at least get a little bit of aggression but if it's a pro player on a thrower they should just be able to keep chipping down the buster stop him from healing up it's a risky strategy for, from Zeta though because it might not have the DPS to win in the final circle. For example, if, they, if they've not got like Buster and RT chipped down low when the gas closes in, they have a lot of HP so they can withstand that. But at the same time, there's just like, I, I don't even know. This strategy is going to be funny to see. Also, I think Zeta last monthly finals went Pearl here. And I was like, that's when I started to believe that Pearl was underrated. So a full month ago, and still, like, people aren't going Pearl in rank whatsoever. This is why you go Pearl. Look at that damage right there. Just absolutely shreds through Luke. You're going to find the kill. It, like, nothing's changed about Pearl. A small HP nerf. I mean, she could even be 80. I mean, was, Meow gets the kill on Semantic. It's looking pretty comfortable for um, Zeta so far. I mean, Zeta, of course, won the World Finals last year. And they've already won one monthly final, I believe. And it's just Zeta, they still look pretty good. But, you know, Humble have been looking really, really good this year. So I'm a bit surprised there's been no real fight back so far. But maybe the reset might be able to help him out a little bit. It's like a 20-minute reset. Uh, but Meow gets the kill onto Sprout right there, which uh, that was just chaotic. And there's not much Buster can do. I just feel like this is a complete outdraft. Like, uh, that's the power of last pick, though. Like... For the longest time, I've always preferred last bit because you it's just literally simple draft maths, right? You get to see the entire enemy team's composition. And with 80 brawlers in the game now, there's a high chance that one of them counters or at least has a good matchup against at least two of the brawlers on the enemy team. But now, it, you know, they haven't got a wall break. They haven't got like an assassin or just something aggressive. Like, I don't know, Miko Mortis. Uh, you get what I mean? that normally counts as throwers or at least a wall break like piper and brock so what can they realistically do i don't think they can really do anything my guess is that they probably know it's over and they're just running in i mean you can never really just go in and waste like a set especially in grand finals especially with so much on the line i'm pretty sure if like zeta i think humble already qualified for lcq if you don't know what lcq is the last chance qualifier uh, so essentially means like whoever finishes near the top of LCQ gets ticket to World Finals. Zeta haven't even got that yet. So I think Humble might actually be above Zeta Division in the points. Which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Uh, so Zeta actually need this more than Humble. But again, like what? I, I'm not really seeing too much from Humble so far. But we do have a hype charge from Semantic, which is surprising enough. But... He just actually managed to find a kill onto Jero, so fair enough does actually get the open. I think it uh, pretty much this game is is entirely re reliant on Semantic because Luke and Boss can't really do too much in the lanes. It's kind of whether Semantic can win his 1v1 and then help out. So that's actually going to be a round win for Humble, so fair enough here. It's probably going to look for... Okay, all of them have got supers. 
probably just looking for the semantic to build up his hypercharge because it's the only thing you really need to build up right now and yeah it's going to be the round going to humble again it's just going to be down to semantic whether he can win his 1v1 whether his teammates can just buy their time for long enough like boss has to get some aggression to at least stop him from getting pinched with his shield as well he's got a gadget he might be able to you know pull pal close but the thing is pal was just absolutely shred for him so what can he actually do like look at that just one piece of ammo and boss is basically half health so again down to semantic but the problem is it's really hard to push into a larry larry lorry like i mentioned I, I literally remember facing it off against him ranked and i was just facing some random and i was like ha like surely isn't this toxic to face off against larry and i on this map you know normally i could just run into him but on this map in particular it just seems really difficult it's gonna be a good flush back from jero there now he popping his hypercharge getting the gadget onto semantic I think semantics oh just barely surviving boss having to go aggro and just nearly get the kill onto meow that could have been a big big kill and now 3v2, it's looking very unlikely that Humble actually here comes a kill from Humble. But now he's fully heated up. Semantic is one shot. He's going to go down easily there. There's pretty much nothing Lu Luki can do. And that's going to be two sets to zero going the way of Zeta. I mean, that one was a clear out draft, right? Like, I just don't think there was really any way that Humble could win that unless Zeta made some big errors. But yeah, that's going to be the go set number two going to Zeta. Let's jump into set three. All right, guys, jumping into set number three, we have Sneaker Fields, Brubble. Again, another map that has been removed out of ro rotation. But still, we can probably learn a lot from this because still like Retina and Galaxy Arena is pretty much similar to Sneaker Fields. I know might have a few different play styles, but I mean, you pretty much just run it down with tanks all of the time here. So you can see by the bands, Rose's band. You can see... Sandinita band, Surge band, of course, Grassy Map, Max band, Melody. I mean, Melody isn't the greatest on a bushy map, but I guess there's just a lot of cheese potential in Melody, especially in Brubble. So I can understand why it's banned out. Cordelius as a first pick, I think it's a very strong first pick. Not many counters out there to Cordelius, to be honest, right now at the top of the meta because he just counters like all of the aggro picks going on. So, Stu. Stew in sneaky field so i mean amber's pretty good i just get a feeling you can counter this though like because amber can be good but only if the map's opened up you can definitely like run it down against an amber and that's exactly what they're actually going to do with a poco and now obviously there's going to be a tank right probably going to be jackie could be el primo could be trying to think of any other assassin draco yeah draco is a good option i completely forgot about draco i'm not too sure how much draco's been played today i've uh, not really been watching too much so i'll have to re-watch the vod though just to get an understanding because i basically didn't really want to ruin too much before i click the record button um in terms of like the meta or whatever else and then a shelly last pick into this so i don't know how to really feel about this i mean i would definitely rather have the humble composition even though they are going up against the shelly uh, draco on a grassy map is going to be good against no tanks cordelius against shelly of course if they get that match up cordelius wins every single time and poco against Stu, like there's always been one of the best counters poco into a Stu because Stu just doesn't have the dps to keep up and i, I think amber is going to be in a similar situ situ situation as well so i can't even get my words out because uh, amber does a lot of damage but, of course, she doesn't have infinite reload. So, once she uh, runs out of that first bit of uh, ammo, you can then just run at her. So, you can see here, Amber's getting a lot of damage, but the Poco heals are just so easy. And then you've got the Draco super on top of that with the healing. It's just so easy as well. Now, it's going to be a two versus one. It is a Shelly on defense, which is probably the best brawler you could get on defense. But, oh, a bit of a miscommunication there. But it doesn't even matter because Boss has another super. He's just running into these guys. And you're trying to tell me... That Draco isn't insanely OP. Are you trying to tell me, like, uh, how, how is anyone even trying to claim that Draco is a balanced brawler? I don't understand it. And I've seen a little bit of conversation about it before the EMEA month finals. I don't think it was played much in East Asia. But you got to realize this is still a draft format and pros are still learning this brawler. Like, it's still a tank. Tanks can get countered in the draft format. But at the same time, you probably see a shift in the way that people are drafting to counter Draco. So, for example, I watched like one set of OCG. Oh, I don't think it's OCG. I think it might have been foot. Like the first pick to Shelly, for example, on knockout. Like Shelly's decent, 
But it's clear to me that like the the drafts are around Drake. Even if you don't see Draco in the draft, you probably take a look at most of the drafts and you think, well, you can't go Draco into this, right? Because they've got one big heavy tank counter. You think of the other sets as well, for example. Like there was an Otis and then there was like a Pearl and an Amber. You can't really run it down on a map like that as Draco. So that, that's one thing to bear in mind. I know I'm waffling a lot, but uh, it just annoys me seeing that people think that Draco's balanced. I, I probably might have overestimated a little bit. Like he's not broken. It's more so the gadget combination. And just after one minute of waffling, boss just runs it in. It's more so his survival factor and especially cheese factor. Like you think you're about to kill him, and then pop gadget, pop super. You fit, you're fully, uh, fully, not even fully healed up. Two thousand healed up, and then. You just burn it down because you get more ammo and then you cycle another super like, look at boss like there's just so much going down pops the gadget at the right time does manage to get the kill onto shelly as well which was pretty decent but now zeta have control but it just takes so much pinching so much resources to take any of them down lukey has no more gadgets left though he does have a super i'm pretty sure he's using the capo right i've not actually look to the poker yet yeah, i mean it looks like he's not healing boss so he, he must have screeching solo he's gonna wait to get some value though the ball is in the pocket i mean the probably goal here is not to feed now he's so much semantic has a hypercharge super so he uh, yeah, okay he does have to cap on amber super going down but that doesn't matter when you have to decapo look he's just gonna heal him straight back up the thing is boss has a cheesy gadget that can keep him alive probably pops it a little bit too preemptively there but doesn't even matter because he's got another one pretty soon now he's gonna get taken into the realm and that is literally gg there's nothing that they can do i just think that's a, again a very poor draft from zayton this is what i'm telling you guys I, I need to do a draft guide because draft will win your games like of course humble played this well and they had to play it well to win but quite clearly the draft was a determining factor like you just can't go Stu into a Poco. Like, Stu on a grassy map is a no-go. And Humble just played that beautifully. I mean, that's going to be set number three. We've got a bit of a game on our hands finally here. Let's go into set number four. All right, guys, jumping into set number four. We have Heist Safe Zone. So, by the bands, Carl and Sam must be a good late pick on Safe Zone. I mean, Carl always is, but Sam, I mean, uh, I guess Boss is an insane Sam. They go with a Nanny first pick, which is pretty interesting. That must be because, like, Piper must be one of the best mids here. Bell must be a pretty good mid buyer on, etc. So, Nanny's a great counter pick into that, but then. I mean, I guess Max is banned, so that the best counter pick to Nanny is banned. So they go with the Colette, which makes sense into this. Because Colette can be pretty decent into a Nanny. It's hard to always uh, connect onto Colette as a Nanny. It's a lot easier as a Piper or a Bell, for example. The next option, I would say, is going to be a Ruffs. Okay, Ruffs is really popular in EU on Safe Zone. I don't really see it in my ranked games whatsoever, but of course, it's a lot different to Pro Play. But interesting, I need to try it roughs a lot more on this map. My guess is that he's just really good at defensive lane. He stops people from getting in behind. He's actually a good counter to Crow as well. Not too sure why they drafted Crow. I mean, Crow's got a good matchup into Colette. Because Colette won't get a lot of value because Crow's squishy. And then uh, anti-healing as well with a gotcha gadget, etc. But I like roughs into uh, Crow. Because you've got the sandbags. Crow super squishy. If you just tap a few shots with roughs onto Crow, he's dead. And then they go with the Piper. Hmm. I my guess is that they didn't want Humble to take the Piper. But I mean, here, what would you even go into this? Maybe an 8-bit? Maybe Bonnie? Actually, I can't go Bonnie into Crow. I don't. What do you even go into this? I mean, I'm glad I'm not the one drafting here. Maybe a thrower? But actually, they can't really go thrower because they can go teleport. Nanny. Okay, Bell. I mean, my first thought was Bell, but then I was like, surely you won't be going Bell into Nanny and Piper. To me, I, this is a really wonky draft because you've got clear, two clear counters against Bell here, but then you're having to force yourself to go a sniper lane, which isn't the best. And then Crow's going to get heavily out. I, I don't know how this is going to play out, to be honest. This is a really weird draft on the side of Zeta. But it's heavily dependent on late game for Zeta. Like, their damage isn't... I mean, it can come in from Nanny teleports, but then Crow's hypercharge doesn't really come into effect for the late game. It's interesting. It's all kind of down to kind of Luki get enough pressure with the bell, which is going to be hard. He's got Piper and Nanny breathing down his neck consistently. 
So it'd be interesting to see how this one really goes. I guess uh, this is probably going to be the most defensive game of safe zone, right? The two snipers just sitting there. Now he already has his super though. He's going to go with a teleport in behind, which is pretty clever. But Ruffs is really good at pinching out. I guess that's why they went Ruffs as well. To counter Nani from teleporting. That's actually really big brained. I completely forgot about that. And Smancy gets a nice super onto the safe. Now he already has another super. There's no point Luki shooting now. He may as well just go for the safe to get more safe damage. That's going to be the kill onto Naui, surely. I mean, Naui buys a lot of time, though. That's a good wall break from Boss there. Breaking open that wall there just allows for pinching much easier. Luke is getting some good pressure, though. And again, this is just what I'm talking about with Piper. Like, Piper is just... Is it... I, again, I, I wouldn't think they scrimmed this. Uh, this is surely just an idea they've just gone randomly in the draft. Because two snipers just hardly ever work. You need the whole map opened up. And you lose control once with two snipers. It's just really hard to gain back the pressure. Because there's just so much going on. There's going to be a hypercharge collect pretty soon. There's Bell consistently tapping the safe. And I don't think Meow has really got any supercharge yet. He hasn't got too much. Smantic's going to get slowed. But I mean he's got a gotcha gadget there. Getting some more damage on the safe. That's already 20% lead. Lucas doing a fantastic job of keeping the middle, by the way. Jero's just been pushed back the entire game, but there's like nothing that he can do because Bell is shooting the safe. Like, it's just over. Like, position they're in right now, they can't pinch because if Nani moves forward, then he's getting hit by the Bell shots off the safe. If Jero moves in a different position, Boss is chipping him down. And that's just beautifully played from Humble. And that just shows, like, Zeta need to get the first, like, engagements and the first kills. If they can get the first kills, then they can start the spawn trap with their composition. But if they get pushed back, there's, like, no comeback potential. You get what I mean? That's why I didn't really want Piper. You probably got to opt to something like Bon. Like, I know Bonnie's terrible. You know what I mean? Like, why go with Sniper? I, I just don't understand that draft. Personally. I don't know. Let's see if they can turn it around. I mean, they get double tap onto Bell here. But again, it's just quite awkward. You can't really like rush into mid with two snipers. It's just not really how it works. Boss doing a great job here of just wasting time. Like literally two people who shoot at him the whole time. It actually gives him enough time for Luki to push forward. That's a much better wall break from Jero this time though. Open and open, 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 in, open, in, open. In. How many times do we need to open it? Open up that left wall. Makes it so he can just pinch a lot easier. And that's what the problems were coming from with Ruffs last time. I think, again, the big problem was that Crow was just getting no pressure whatsoever. He's always on the back foot. So that means Collect can always push up. Always get some value with Supers. So yeah, Smantic's doing a great job of keeping maximum range. I didn't even know that if you just hook the lake there, Crow can't even hit you. Which is an interesting interaction. It's like now he's going to just hit Smantic there. I guess he knows he can't really... Um, teleport in but he still bought a lot of time with that teleport but the problem is now yeah meow's just getting no value whatsoever with crow like uh, crow is good in heist but i think it, it still is pretty easily countered right good players can pinch crow no range uh, his gadgets just get no value anymore he only provides value once he gets his hypercharge and that is literally for like the last 30 seconds of the game so here boss is doing a good job staying alive Smantic just trying to pinch down. I mean, Crow's just tickling him right now. That's going to be Smantic going down, but it's still a bit of a lead going the way of Zeta. Now he's going to teleport in, but instantly traded out, which is going to be fine for Humble. Boss gets the kill onto Jero as well. The lead is shared now. Meow already has a super. That means he's probably close to his hype charge, so that's why he's not jumping in yet, because he probably like a few, I would imagine maybe like three shots. So hype, okay, he's got it now. He's going to jump on in the middle. That's going to be a lot of damage. Holy. One crow jump just did it all of that. How much was that? Well, 30% uh, is still quite a lot. I guess now Semantic is probably a couple of shots away from his hypercharge here. He's going to just push forward. He's going to wait for someone to feed. Look at Jero and now they're just running away. Because they know Semantic are close to hypercharge. He gets it anyways because of the crow. Crow, got to push up. There's only a few percentages left. Can they get it in time? And they can't get it in time. That was really clutch. That was so clutch from Semantic. Yeah. Like, look at that. The, the I don't know what you call it. Like, the, the fact that he had, like, the... um, What do you call it? The patience. He had, like, patience to not shoot 
uh, not use his super on the safe to then wait for his hypercharge because his hypercharge just deals so much damage and the crow just doesn't deal enough damage to do like to kill him in time piper and nanny didn't want to feed him in time they were just really trying not to feed him the hypercharge but now we're 2-2 going to the final set let's jump into it all right guys now we're jumping into the fifth and final set so wow uh, the worst map to finish things off on shooting star really I was excited for this. At least it's not the same center stage from the past few monthly finals that we keep getting every single time. So I guess shooting star is a battle of skill, bro. It's a battle of literally who can win their lanes, who can hit the most shots. So we see the bands of... Wait, no nanny ban? Do I, do I see that right? No nanny ban. We have a melody ban at the bottom right. Carl has been played really early on the draft. There must be a lot of nonsense going on in shooting star at the moment surely they go in nanny like i know bell so surely you still go nanny into this right like whenever we have rt surely we go in nanny someone's going nanny anyone anyone going nanny someone please maybe Be uh, byron instead maybe a bit of uh, you can't really go throw in the middle now do you go gray to counter it you go tick still into carl that is a bit optimistic. Get it? Tick. Optimistic. Yeah, I'm not funny at all, am I? No one's laughing. No, no, no one's laughing. Maybe one person might comment. That bad, that was funny. Yeah, definitely. Right, I've lost my mind. Okay, where are we going to go? We're going to go 8-bit. We're going to go Manny. We're going to go Nanny. We're going to go Nanny. Is anyone going to go Nanny? Anybody Nanny? Anybody? Jeans band as well. I don't even know what else they could go. What else could they possibly go? Meg. Okay, so Meg. Good into a potential nanny that they can't go. Uh, Carl can't really kill Meg as well if you're running not back. So I guess it's that. Bell can't really kill Meg as well in a 1v1 unless you're a really bad Meg. Like you should just be able to at least hold your lane against Bell every single time. I would... Uh, what would you even go to this? Loki Pell. Okay, yeah, Pearl is a great option into this. I would have maybe, yeah, I would have maybe gone Pearl, Lola. Colette sounds, sounds dumb, but Arty has a lot, a lot of health, and so does Meg. So, you know, Colette could have actually been an underrated one, but uh, Pearl has a really good matchup into Meg, if you didn't know, just because they both have, like, similar HP. But easily, Pell can win that interaction, especially with the damage and whatever else. So, I don't know. I feel like... I feel like Zeta should have comp. Secretly, they have, should have comp. But it's all dependent on how the Carl plays. It depends on whether they can stop Carl from going in consistently. And they might be able to with a defensive RT. It depends on the RT as well, because RT is a hard brawler to play on shooting star. He's got such a thin projectile. So it's all down to that. But the, the problem is... Okay, they're going to go with a more defensive setup here. They're putting the call on the Meg. My guess is that once Tick oversteps, Carl will just try and gadget straight onto him. That's why Carl's positioned on that left, so it gets a little bit of coverage. Now we can just sit back. This is a really defensive position from Zeta. But they're looking to just try and hold the blue star and win the entire time. Boss is going to try and trickle down Meow. I mean, RT shouldn't be too scared against the, uh, against the Pell because he has so much HP. They are switching matchups here. Meow's going to sense a blood a little bit on Luki because, of course, Tick's super squishy. So if Meow can push up and just gadget once, Luki's dead pretty much all the time. Boss does a good job of staying alive there. This is just a crazy game of just pinch on shooting star spantix getting a lot of value out of meg so far does get slowed down he is probably going to get pinched out of mech you can see him using the star power that knocks him back luke is going to use a tick head does narrowly get pinched down though and now humble really on the aggression i don't like pushing it all the way this far back and shooting star because eventually you're going to get pinched out right and humble doing a fantastic job so far jero has to go in with his super to buy a little bit of time now he's going to go down to the gadget Jero's going to go in here and it just doesn't manage to get Semantic in time. 15 seconds left. Now Humble are going to go on the defense. Semantic gets a great kill onto Jero to relieve some pressure. And it looks all but over for Zeta. There's surely no way that they can actually run back in time. Boss with another gadget kill onto the bell. And this is looking like a Humble game. And now they're onto match point. That was actually a lot closer than anticipated. Somehow Zeta got up the map and made that close. 
But now they are one game away from finally winning a monthly final this time around. I think this would be Luki's and Boss's first ever monthly final win. But for the longest time, people have said for like years that Boss is a very good player. He just needs the right team around him. Of course, we know Symantec is goaded, especially with his brawl knowledge. And Luki, I just loved watching Luki last year, especially. I don't know if it was, I think it was his beginner year last year, but uh, we just knew for years Luki was absolutely goaded. So I'll be very happy if Humble win this. Hopefully, they're not humbled here in the last set. So, again, Data are adopting this really defensive strategy. The problem is, again, in Bounty and Shooting Star, is. There's only so much you can do running away. If you're eventually getting chipped down, if you're eventually getting pushed back to spawn, you're going to be with your backs against the wall and it's just going to be a lot easier to get hit. So, again, it's kind of up to... Well, it's up to all three of them, but if, like, Jero can get, like, a gadget and a super combination down, that would be great. If Pearl gets a gadget kill, that would be great. But now Luki has adopted this great position down the left-hand side. He may not be doing a lot in terms of kills or whatever else, but he's just doing his job keeping him pinned back I was going to push up a little bit here he's going to destroy that ticket pretty quickly but he's going to go weak Luki might sense that but again Meow's always got that um say gadget star power it's not gadget star power is it? it's shield star power Spantic's on the heal up again and I think Humble are just playing the patient game here they're not overextending this is what makes a good team, though, in my opinion. You don't want to just go all out, right? Jero's going to go for the gadget play onto Luki. Boss senses that. But now that kind of messes things up. Now you've just gone on an aggressive. You've utilized a super and a gadget. And this is where Semantic smells a blood. A great pinch from Boss and Semantic there. Boss actually manages to get another kill. Just one start in it with 20 seconds left. It's like the perfect position for Humble. 15 seconds left. Jero needs to use the gadget to get up surely here. I wonder if he's even close to super. He is close to super here. They need to try and get the tick down. They need to get something down. Now he's going for the kill on boss. Boss is super, super weak. Meow just misses out on the kill. And that's going to be humble winning that game in the end. And you absolutely love to see it. Semantic ecstatic as always. Crazy, crazy game. They finally get their monthly final win. I think they've got two seconds, maybe even three seconds. I can't remember all of the logistics. A little bit unfortunate for Zeta. I don't like it when it show, shows the losing player counts. But I kind of want to watch that last little bit there. And then we'll wrap up the video. Because that was super close at the end. I feel like they really should have won that. Really small margins in it. Now he gets really close to getting boss down. If they just... Oh, that was 210 HP. Like, oh. They could have actually... I mean, I don't know if they could have actually won that in the end. Because now he was pretty weak anyway. I mean... Mm, I, small margins, small margins either way. Anyways, that's going to be it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. A double upload, and of course, any sneak peeks that I'm able to upload, I'll be uploading them as soon as possible. So I'll see you guys next time. Hope you enjoyed some good competitive gameplay. And I'll see you guys, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow.